Alright, so today we're going to be talking about the relationship between the mole and the volume of a gas. Just remember, if you do have mole problems, make sure you call Avogadro at 602-1023. Again, that number is 602-1023. So if you didn't get that the first time or the second time, 602-1023. Call now. <laughs> All right, so the mole volume relationship helps us to relate moles and the volume of gases, okay? So Avogadro had a hypothesis that basically stated that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain equal number of particles. So it didn't matter what that gas was, okay, or what those two gases are, whether it's carbon dioxide and water vapor or whatever it is, at the same temperature and the same pressure, both of those gases will have equal number of particles. Okay? So we can take that a step further and say that the volume of a gas can vary with changes in temperature and pressure. All right, and this is why the volume of a gas is usually measured at what is called standard temperature and pressure. We'll refer to that as STP. Now the standard temperature and pressure for a gas is zero degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin, and the standard pressure for a gas is 101.325 kilopascals, or kPa. And that's also one atmosphere. And if you look at that nifty picture down there at the bottom, that's Avogadro. He definitely looks like a mole, in my opinion. If you think about STP, just so you know, one atmosphere is what we experience right now. And so at zero degrees Celsius at one atmosphere, just when it's cold outside, just think about that. It's STP, not STD. There's a big difference. Yeah. No STD, STP is good. Yes, yeah, so STDs are bad. All right, so at STP, one mole of a gas, and it doesn't matter what that gas is, as we previously stated, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles of that gas occupy a volume of 22.4 liters. So let's look at that a little bit closer. Clo a little bit more clip. Closer. Closer. I can't talk. It's, it's after 320, so I can't talk. All right, so 22.4 liters is what is known as the molar volume. All right, so last week we talked about molar masses, and now we're gonna add a new um, word to our vocabulary, and that's molar volume, all right, which is nothing more than the volume of one mole at standard temperature and pressure, okay? So the molar volume is used to convert between numbers of moles of a gas and the volume of a gas at standard temperature and pressure. Now remember that STP, all right? That's very important. If we don't have standard temperature and pressure, this molar volume, this 22.4 liters, won't work, okay? So let's look at an example, all right? So let's determine the volume in liters of 3.36 moles of carbon dioxide gas at standard temperature and pressure. I don't know what that was. That was weird. All right, so remember um, that anytime we have um, two measurements that are equal to each other, we can make those into conversion factors. All right, so one mole over 22.4 liters or 22.4 liters over one mole. Okay, so first step is to write down what we know, 3.36 moles of carbon dioxide gas. All right, so we'll set up our conversion factor here. That's a nice straight line. All right, whatever unit we start with, remember that goes on the bottom. So I wanna put moles of CO2 on the bottom. And then whatever we're trying to convert to, right here, so volume in liters, that goes on the top. So liters, of CO2 goes on the top. And then it's nothing more than using our equivalents right here to fill in the numbers. All right, so what number goes with liters? From our equivalents, we know that to be 22.4. What number goes with moles? From our equivalents, we know that to be one. All right, so moles of CO2 will cancel out. And if we do our calculations correctly, we should arrive at an answer of 75.3 liters of CO2. And the answer is rounded to three significant figures. Because our measurement here has started with three. Three significant figures. So you guys are all becoming professionals on sig figs. At least I hope so. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. 
All right, so at STP, how many moles are in 3.20 times 10 to the negative fourth liters of CH4? And for all of you organic chemistry nuts out there, remember CH4 is methane gas. That's what comes out of our little spigots. Remember we talked about spigots and how cool of a word it is. All right, so step one is to write down what we know. So 3.20 times 10 to the negative fourth liters. All right, for you math majors at home, that's 0.32 milliliters, I think. Ooh. I think, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no? No comment. No comment. All right. It's after 320. It's after 320, we can't think that hard. All right, so, um, I forgot my label in here, CH4. All right, so whatever unit we start with goes on the bottom, so that'll be liters of CH4. And whatever we're trying to convert to, it's, it's asking us to find how many moles so that will go on top. All right, remember one is the number that goes with moles and 22.4 is the number that goes with liters. Remember we get that from our equivalence of one mole of any gas at STP equals 22.4 liters. All right, so we'll do some more math here and we should come to an answer of 1.43 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of CH4. All right, so remember once again, three significant figures here because we started off with three significant figures. Now, if you were having trouble with scientific notation with the first problem, like 3.20 times 10 to the negative fourth, take it out. So it would be 0.000, 0 .000 320 liters. So just remember, if you can't figure it out in your calculator, if you're having some trouble, just take it out. Okay, so then my answer would be 0 0.00143. Moles. Yay, scientific notation. Hurrah. All right, so we can actually use our molar volumes and molar masses to calculate the density of a gas. Okay? So gases, remember, at STP have a molar volume of 22.4 liters. All right, so to calculate the molar mass, if we start with grams per liter here and we multiply by 22.4 liters over one mole, Okay, remember this grams per liter, that's our density, all right? Okay, so we would get that from the problem, all right? Notice that the liters would cancel out here and we end up with some number, whatever that is, X, and you can see that the units that are left are grams on top and moles on bottom. So we'd have some number X or Y or whatever you wanna call it get rid of that X. with the units of grams per mole, all right? So, yeah. Herzog wanted me to get rid of that because he didn't. Like he didn't multiply. want to. He didn't want to confuse you guys. So I let's like let's just say um, sub number A. How's oh, that? Is that better? A lot better. Okay. All right. So to calculate the density using the molar mass, remember that molar mass is measured in grams per mole. Per mole. So if we multiply by um, our uh, molar volume, remember which is one mole. 22.4 liters, all right, so this time the moles are gonna cancel out and we'll have the units for density. some number, A, and the units of grams per liter, which are the units for density. All right, so let's do another example. A gaseous compound of nitrogen and oxygen has a density of 2.05 grams per liter at STP. What is the molar mass of this gas? All right, so we'll take the 2.05 grams per one liter, and we will multiply it by our molar volume, which is 22.4 liters over one mole. I was clients, why did you put that one on top? Why did you put one mole on top? Okay, well, I didn't put one mole on top because I wanted to make sure that I canceled out liters. So if I start with liters on the bottom, of my um, original unit here, I wanna make sure that liters are on top so that they cancel out. So what'll end up happening is we'll have 2.05 times 22.4,
which rounded comes out to 46.0. And if we did the units like we're supposed to, you can see that we would have grams times liters over one, okay, so we're doing one times one there on the bottom, liters times mole, okay? So the liters would cancel out, and we know that 46 divided by one is 46, so we end up with an answer of 46.0 grams per mole. And that's the molar mass. Okay, and that's the molar mass of whatever this gaseous compound turns out to be, which is N2O maybe? No? Yeah, no. maybe? No? Who knows? NO2? NO2? 16, 32, 14. That may be right. Yes, yeah, NO2. NO2. Look at that. Chemistry nerds unite. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's look at our final example here. We need to find the density of sulfur hexafluoride gas at STP. All right, so the first thing we need to do is find the molar mass. That is some shoddy writing right there. It's okay, though. Yeah, that's better than some students. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, chicken scratch. All right, so in order to find unt molar mass, we need to know unt formula for sulfur hexafluoride. All right, so if you remember from our previous unit, sulfur hexafluoride is a covalent compound because of the prefix here. So this is going to be SF6. Six. Okay, a little Espanol there for Mr. Herzog. We're bilingual up in here. See. All right, so S, so that's one atom times molar mass of 32.1, and F, which is six, six atoms. Times. 19.0, so that comes out to 146.1. 146.1. Thank you, Senor Herzog, with the calculator. All right, so there's our molar mass, 146.1 grams per mole. So that's what we're going to start with. So we have 146.1 grams per one, one mole. All right, we're going to multiply that by our molar volume which remember is one mole over 22.4 liters. Now, this is opposite of the last problem. Notice how I have mole on the bottom, all right? I wanna cancel that out because I want grams per liter. So I put mole on top of my conversion factor here. All right, so this ends up being 146.1 grams times mole over 22.4 mole times liter. All right, you can see that the moles are going to cancel out. So if I do the math here, 146.1 over 22.4, I should get, it's four o'clock by the way. It is four o'clock. 6.52. I should get 6.52 grams per liter. All right, shout out to uh, Mr. Herzog on the calculator again. Solid, solid work. All right, and that will uh, do it for this episode of Sheldon Coop. Oh, wait, that's the wrong thing. It's not fun with flags. Vexicology. Vexicology? <laughs> yeah, we need to edit that out. I'm not editing it out. Okay. Let's do it in there. All right. Oh, good Lord. Goodbye. <laughs>